invite back our five presenters from sessions three and four. I invite to the stage Danielle Assisi, Nicole Temple Assisi, Kirsten DeMello, João Korngood, and Luis Lima. And uh, welcome Priscila Pereira from Love and Charity Spirit Center in Orlando, uh, and board member of the United States Spiritist Council to moderate the session. Okay, um, first question is for uh, John. Are there enough reincarnation technicians for everyone? So, if you remember, um, I mentioned that uh, we are 7 billion incarnates and 21 billion discarnates. So, at least for each one of us, there are three out there that can help us on the incarnation process. That's not the reality, right? But, um, of course, uh, there are infinite spirits in the spiritual world uh, throughout all the planets and all the universes. So, there is also uh, incessantly work in the spiritual world for all the spirits that want to work and want to help. So, you can be sure that there are enough spirits to help us in our reincarnation planning, if, even if we are not involved because we don't believe in it. Thank you. Okay, this question here is for Kirsten. Um, Everything presented here today is so logical. Why don't more people believe it? <laughs> uh, it it's kind of a complicated question. Um, I'll do my best to try to answer that. Because when you say everybody, do you mean the outside world or do you mean us in general? Because even us as spiritists, we may believe it. But to actually put it into full practice is even complicated for us. Because there's a vast difference between logically understanding something and being able to fulfill it on an emotional level. Like we were discussing with a friend of ours just earlier today that if my brother does something wrong against me, I can forgive him and I can feel emotionally it's easy for me to forgive him. But on the other aspect, because I know I should forgive him, but if on the other aspect, my brother does something against me, I intellectually, I know that within spiritism, I know that, or just, I know that I should forgive him, but in my heart I cannot, I don't. So why don't we accept that? Why don't we fully accept it? Because we are still in this continuum of time and we all come from different backgrounds and different understandings and each one of us play a major role in that. And if you wish to understand a little bit more, there's a great book that was just translated into English. It's called On the Way to the Light that was psychographed by Francisco Candido Xavier by the Spirit of Manual. It talks about the different um, cultures and the different belief systems and it'll kind of give you a better grasp and the understanding to really fully answer that question and it's a true depth. Thank you, Kristen. Can I chime in really quick too? Oh, of course. Because we're very interactive today. So I love that question. I love that question because I love to ask a question back. Does it matter if other people don't believe in what we believe? Okay, Daniel, so I'm going to just, um, the next question is for you, so you can continue, and the call. <laughs> Do we have to believe in Jesus to become an spiritist? No. One of the things that we are going to find that I think is absolutely beautiful about any great movement towards good, it's tolerance and understanding. And obviously we find we spiritists find in the spirits book in question 625 which is one of the coolest questions ever um, and the question that's posed is asked what is the best mentoring guide that we have there um, from which to model our behavior and the answer is very simple it's the shortest message, uh, answer that we have in the spirits book it says Jesus um, and which obviously Jesus we think it is a great soul is a great teacher that has come here on earth we believe it to be the greatest moral teacher um, however, um, the spirits in their wisdom, and Kardec in his wisdom, was very keen to understand that because we are very extremist sometimes, um, Kardec was very ex uh, extremist 
to, to, um, to follow that question up, and sometimes we forget about that with, um, is he the only mentor and guide? And the, 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 the answers, the answer that the spirits give us is no. There are many other mentors and guides. So I think that sometimes we get tripped on that only word because our own background is that of generally of Christianity. We focus a lot on, on the Christ because we believe him to be the greatest, the greatest moral guide that we've seen. But it doesn't take away from any other mentor or guide out there. If our tradition, if our history or our background is not as familiar with Christianity, it's only natural that we find beautiful um, um, laws of morals and ethical values in other traditions, which we should look into um, understanding as well. Because if anything that we have learned with Spiritism is that the truth comes from many different places at many different times. So if the, the Christ is the, we believe it to be the apex of all these moral traditions and wisdom, um, it is also a repetition in a way of the beautiful message of love and ethical understanding that we see throughout culture and time. So no, you don't have to be um, uh, a Christian to start to look into these beautiful teachings that we see in Spiritism. However, Spiritism did come in the Western world and it has a lot of a flavor of Christianity to it because we, we have that background with us. And this is when I also make a plug because I also want to invite all of us to reevaluate the idea of the Christ. I always say half jokingly that the Christ has been kidnapped. The idea of what Jesus is, what the Christ is, has been kidnapped in our culture. For 2,000 years, we have been perverting the idea of the Christ, and we don't really know today, we don't inherit from our culture and our humanities when we go to our churches and so forth, the idea of the true Christ. And we oftentimes have people tell us who the Christ is, and sometimes the Christ can be very different depending on who you speak to. So we invite every one of them, we invite every one of us, including ourselves, to go out and try to understand the Christ, not as a... Uh, uh, religious figures who just did things because he was a Christ, but a very wise, beautiful, loving soul who so much wisdom and so much kindness and understanding that the things that came through him were of fantastic value to us. But it doesn't mean that he's the only uh, person we should listen to. And I don't think that the Christ would want that either. The Christ himself did not write anything down. And we have in the New Testament, for instance, the testimony of four different people. Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Four different witnesses. As if to say, I think this is poetically beautiful, as if to say, look, you have four different viewpoints. Go out and bring them together and arrive at your own meaning. And if that we find in Christianity itself, why not look into the other beautiful doctrines that are out there so that we can find that which resonates with us and then arrive at that Christ-like consciousness of togetherness, of love, of communication, of connection, of compassion. So... That was not a short answer at all. No, it was not. But thank you, Daniel. Now, Daniel, now it's your fault that Luis only has 30 seconds to answer his question. <laughs> yes. So the question is, so Luis, so you're not afraid of dying, right? Uh, <laughs> this is what I'm going to say. I'm less afraid of dying. Not afraid of dying is not probably for my level yet. I'm much less afraid of dying than several years before, and last year and the years before. Less than 30 seconds. Thank you. Woo!